Okay. Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Super glad you're here. And as promised, this is going to be one of those cutting edge shows. I have a lot of questions we're going to get answered and hopefully we'll go places that we haven't gone before, learn some new pieces because I've got Adam Lamb here. Very interesting how I met him. And when I met him actually online and learned what he's doing out in the world, I'm certainly a candidate for this. I think we actually all are because my guess is that the earlier we deal with this stuff, the better. So with that, the conversation is going to be about cutting edge anti-aging. So if that's something that's happening for you, if, if you're at any part of the decade spectrum where you are aging, this is definitely going to be the conversation for you. And I just want to thank at the beginning, my sponsors, obviously, because thank you, bless you. That's why I'm here. And because we've built relationship over the years. So thank you for being the influencers you are. Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. I highly recommend you go check them out because they're doing spectacular work out in the world. And uh, Dr. Dane here teaches being you, changing the world. Dr. Dane, uh, D-A-I-N here, H-E-E-R.com or accessconsciousness.com. Well worth your time. And I'll tell you a little bit about who Adam is and what he's doing out in the world. He is the founder and a hormone specialist at Renew Life RX. So if you're feeling like you've lost your edge, but you're unsure why, it's probably due to age-related hormone decline. And if that's the chance, there's a 100% surety that Adam can help. Adam is also the best-selling author of the book, Better Than the Binge, Overcoming the Social Obligation of Alcohol. I want to go into that a little bit because I think that's an important conversation too. And he offers an extensive intervention style coaching for those who are looking to change or eliminate their relationship with alcohol. If you want to find out more about him and the company and what they offer, it is RenewLifeRx.com. Com. Adam, welcome to Dare to Dream. You are finally hey, here. Good to be here. I'm very excited to be here and see where I can offer value to the listeners and, and have an, another conversation with you. Uh, it's always pleasant, so I look forward to it and ready to dive right in. Cool. You have a really unique, specific career path right now. So take us through it. How'd you get there? Um, where did you start out and how did you end yeah. up in hormones and anti-aging? So it, it started out, I've always been really involved and almost obsessed with health, fitness, wellness. Uh, and at one point in my 20s, um, I was doing like pretty high profile clientele coaching. So I worked with a lot of really successful business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, guys you see on CNBC, things like that, that I would help with their nutrition, things like that. These guys, they, they weren't always getting the results as my younger clients, right? And so- and Can I just ask, how did they find you? How did they know to come to I, you? I just, you, you know, it's, it's, I was, I've always been one of those guys that's never been scared to reach out to people. Um, and then if you, you take care of a couple of big name people and they introduce you and then- it just keeps rolling, you know, as long as you do do good for people and, and things like that. And it's always been important to me. I, I always say that my, my reputation is what is always the most important thing to me and doing that. So like doing the right thing, taking care of people, trying to help going above and beyond uh, doing a lot of things too, for, you know, the young entrepreneurs I coach, I say, man, get out there and do some stuff for free, help people out. Don't have your hand out every single time you get an opportunity. Mm. Uh, it'll all come back if you're good. And so, in doing that, I realized that a lot of these guys weren't getting the results. You know, they're in their late forties, early fifties, you know, they're eating. I'm like, you cheating on your diet. What are the things? And they weren't. And so then, you know, I knew about hormones and testosterone and those kind of things, but I always thought of it more as like that performance enhancing uh, space, not therapeutic. Uh, and it wasn't very popular. This is 15 years ago. And so after, as time went on, I realized this is probably what these guys are missing just based on the research I was doing and reading and studying. And then the next step was it was so hard for these guys. I mean, a couple of billionaires to find a good physician that could help with that. Right. Um, and at least local. And so I went on this kind of path to find 
really smart docs that were really forward thinking, looking into the future of where things go and connecting these docs with these clients. And so then it, I became like this pretty good, almost middleman to do it. And I learned, you know, like I love to learn. I'm constantly, re I read at least 50 plus books a year. I'm constantly like, I'm just a sponge, right? Especially for stuff that interests me. And so I'm always learning about, you know, I hear the conversations from the doctors, the, you know, the, the clients would share their blood work. And I, so it helped me like really, really get passionate about it, really get excited about it and learn about it. And the, you know, that was probably 12 years ago when I started to really be good at connecting these you know, individuals that needed help to people that could help. And then as it went on, there's certain docs, you know, that you're like, yeah, I don't really, they, I don't feel comfortable with them or maybe they're doing other goofy stuff that, you know, so you, you kind of, you got to watch who you refer your client to and those kind of things. And then what it actually evolved to is creating a clinic where we have, uh, you know, kind of our doctor panel, so to speak. And we have our network nationwide of, of people that will refer, you know, our, our clients to, and then we coordinate, we manage the clients. Is it? So the company is really, a, 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 I'm a glorified client coordination person, but you know, our job is, we have the relationship, so we get the white gloves, roll out the red carpet type thing for our clientele, whether you're you know, the top A-list celebrity right now or you're my neighbor down the street who's just looking to feel better, right? Like everybody gets the same service, because that's, I think, you know, in the medical industry, one thing is sometimes it, it's just a bad experience, right? You're going, you wait two hours, you had to wait three weeks to make the appointment, just to hear like everything's okay, uh, sorry, and you're like, what? You know what I mean? And so I wanted to- Oh, that's even if they return your call, by the way. I'm, right. And this has happened, I'm right by Cedar sinai which is one of the most popular, well-known hospitals mm -hmm. in the world, right? In West Hollywood. And I literally left a message for Dermatologist Monday. Here we are Thursday, nothing. And I, it happens I a lot. Here, here local, and we'll talk about that later, <sighs> launching, a, launching a stem cell clinic here local in Texas where I'm at. Mm -hmm. and. I just was kind of sniffing around and I called it clinic stem cells. It's cash pay and it's, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten grand, you know, depending on the procedure. And I, same thing, I called, left a message. I'm interested in stem cells. <coughs> I understand it's cash pay. Nothing. No one recalled. I'm like, it's crazy. So, so that's the part of it. So our, our service is, uh, is all right. Give me one sec. Yeah, no worries. I'll get it This is from being sick. Oh my God. This happened last night at the theater. Oh, it's terrible. <coughs> Kicks in out of nowhere. <coughs> yeah. Let me just choose some gum and it'll be attractive, but help. <sighs> Wow. 
That is crazy town. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we went to see an amazing yeah. play last night. <clears throat> and thank God it was before the play started. Same thing. And they had to go get me water. Whew. This flu was just like not fun. I had a nasty one. Actually, James, our, our friend James, at why we met, he's he is not good right now with the flu. He's he's in in bed today. Well, it's um like a super bug flu, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, I when I had it like a couple weeks ago, um, my wife said in the like 13 years she's known me, she's never seen me that down. I mean, surgery, crazy parties, you know, nothing. Never seen me down as hard as that. Wow. Terrible. All right. Well, thank you. Bless you. And <clears throat> I'll definitely have somebody edit this and take out that craziness. I'm going to keep the gum for now. Excuse me. I would typically not ever. Yeah. And you got to do what you got to do. I had to speak. Um, when I was sick and I had to have gum in my mouth or I was nonstop putting cough drops in. Actually, I spoke last night at church, but that, I was not sick and it went very well. That's exactly what I need to do, cough drops. Thank you for that reminder. Put that in my purse. I will do so. Okay. So, my darling, <clears throat> getting back. Yeah, getting back to being a... <clears throat> so, you know, what, what we've done today is create... A, a service that helps facilitate the client onboarding process, right? So we we just take a lot of the, the stuff out of the doctor's hands as far as like communicate, like here, get the paperwork done. You know, you know the process is very simple, right? You go through right. it, here you go, we get this done. So we kind of help coordinate that stuff so that the docs can do what they're really good at, which is looking at your file, looking at your blood work, looking at your physical reading kind of the stuff, the symptoms, the things that you want to change in your life and, and going, ah, oh, cool. It's a, you know, her blood works here and here and here. This is her goals. That makes sense. So we're going to go, we'll suggest that we do these things. And then the doc makes a recommendation. You say thumbs up. We get the process going. Everything's out, shipped out to you. And then what happens after the process of once you have become a client, you are on a program is consistent follow-up. You know, the first 30 days, we touch base every week. Um, and then the next 60, 90, it's, you know, tw twice a month, every two weeks, something like that, unless there's something else, just to make sure everything's good because- the Imagine reality, you're doing blood tests, right? You're making- Well, that's, that's more just like, how are you feeling? How are you sleeping? I see. You know, how are, if there, is there any issues? Because everybody's body is different. And right. one of the problems in the hormone space is that, there's a lot of cookie cutter stuff. So everybody gets this, this, and this. Well, it doesn't really work for everybody. And it might work for some people and most people. And maybe that's like a good way to start for them. But we have a very detailed custom approach to how we do it for folks. And it, and it works really well. And part of what the process is that follow up. You know, if you think in most situations, when you leave your visit with your physician, they don't call you every two weeks or email you every two weeks just to say, how are you doing? How are you sleeping? How's that new medication we have you on? How's it treating you? You know, it's basically, here's the side effects. Call us if you're going to call 911 if you feel like you're going to die or. Right. Well, let me ask you, because I know you, your moniker is a concierge style clinic. Yes. But you're also called a telemedicine clinic. What yes. does that mean? So we, we have a pretty unique process uh, and, and actually we we're talking about it with our attorney today going through our stuff just annually we like to make sure like based on where things are uh, in Complianceville and how we do business like do they, does everything look wonderful right and, and so like telemedicine it's a, it's a new way of doing medicine and so we have a I won't go into too much detail because it's proprietary and we actually have people hire uh, another arm of our clinic to help these other clinics get set up on how we do it. But in, in a nutshell, we can kind of almost see what, like what we're doing. Our physician can meet with you this way. And also we have you work with a local physician to get medically cleared. So, and that's where that kind of partnership in works. So it's, it's cool. So telemedicine, it's because at the end of the day, if 
your hormones are goofed up, we don't really have to see you in person to solve that, right? Okay. So we work with a, a local physician to get you medically cleared, but the real stuff is in the blood work, and, and that's where we pay the most detail in, and that's what allows us to go fast and, and help so many people and have this kind of um, care that we give, this service that we give, because we're focused on the good stuff, not sitting in a waiting room, okay, go into the procedural office and wait here. And then the doc's got to rush because he's got 10 more people just like you to go, right. go, go, go. You know? No, it's great. I mean, you can go to a place, a lab by your own house, which is what I did with you, get your blood drawn and a couple of days, you know, start getting some information. So I want to talk about men mm -hmm. because one in four men over 30 from your website suffer from the effects of low testosterone. Yeah. So First, how does a man, how does this one in four men figure out if he is one of those men, if he has mm -hmm. to address testosterone issues? So there's a, a, a couple things, and I'll take a probably a, a deeper dive for you too that most people don't go into. So, and you look into it, the symptoms are, you know, low libido, low energy, brain fog, uh, body composition isn't really doing what it's supposed to you know some things we talk about that a lot of don't talk is confidence um decision making you know like are you somebody who's like i don't know i don't know or are you like yeah let's do it there's a difference mm -hmm. you're in and we hear it and you know we work with a lot of, uh, of men and women in leadership it doesn't in this stuff this testosterone stuff it's not just men it's women libido all these things we're talking about it's across the board um, it applies, but it's more important in men because we require a higher amount, but it's very just as important in women. And, and so, but some of the other things that, you know, if, if you're active and you're eating healthy and you're kind of, you're paying attention, right? You have this self-awareness of health. You're going to notice if things are down, but if you're couch potato, eating fast food every day, not exercising, you you may just be so far away from feeling good that you wouldn't you low testosterone, high testosterone, it wouldn't matter because you're just like bumping a log. And, you know, we don't, we're not, uh, we don't coach those people out of those places as well. Um, the folks we like to work with are the guys that, you know, they're 48 years old and they're like, man, I just, I'm running out of energy. My body, I'm, I'm eating clean, dude, I'm eating better than I've ever eaten in my life. I'm, I'm exercising all the time in that I don't see the changes, right? And they're like, you know, my wife is gorgeous. And I just like, I wish I wanted to like, take her down, throw her on the bed. He's like, but I don't, you know? And it, and maybe yeah. it's affecting their marriage. Like those are the people that we like to work with. And, and those are the people we usually hit home runs with because mm -hmm. what, by the time they get to that point, A, they're usually healthy because they're paying attention. They're like, I'm eating right, I'm doing this. We don't have to worry about health risks as much, even though we monitor all that. Um, but we, then we can just, we can look and see where the issues are, make the adjustments, put them on a program, follow up with them. And now they have this new found life again, right? And for men, do they always have to do that shot, that big ass needle shot in their no. thigh? So that's a great question. So I would say 80% of our patients do testosterone cream. Oh, awesome. We have some that do injections. But here's the, you know, the, and the injections are fine. I used to do them. I do the cream now because I always thought the cream wasn't good. But the reality is it's, it's, it's where you get the cream. And the compound pharmacies that we work with have come a long way and they make really good testosterone cream that works really well. And, and it just, I put it on my forearms in the morning and I leave. I'm not alcohol swabbing my butt and doing this thing. You know, I don't have to do any of that. And that stuff's, and I don't want my six-year-old daughter walking in like, what's dad doing? Right? <laughs> totally. then, you know, there's a lot of our clients that the reason they don't look into testosterone therapy is, or didn't before is, and maybe they'll hear stuff like this on this podcast, for example, is they think they have to do shots and they don't want to do shots. And they're like, well, I can do cream. Yeah. And it dries in 10 minutes and you don't have to worry about, and like, Oh, well, I would have done this 10 years ago if I knew that. Right. So um, it's a great I'm glad question. You said that actually, cause I use bioidentical creams. And mm -hmm. I've always wondered after I put it on in the morning and I go to the gym and maybe after I work out, I'm going to take a shower. And I've always thought like, is this going to come off or is this in me already? Right. And it varies. Like I will say all cream is not com 
are all topical, you know, is not created equally. Okay. There is not one, um, you know, if you get Heinz ketchup, you know what you're getting, right? But if you get, you might go to the aisle and see 10 different kinds of ketchup. They're probably not all going to taste the same, same consistency, same ingredients. And, and so some pharmacies do a really good job at it. Some are like, not that good. And the folks we work with are really, really good at it. Otherwise, we won't work with them, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And let, let it, let's talk a little bit, because this came up on my blood test. Mm -hmm. So I do want to talk about lipid panels. Yeah. Cholesterol, HDL ratios, and all of yeah. that. So if healthy cholesterol levels should be good on a blood test, most often we don't know why these levels get out of range. So can you address that? Yeah, so I'm glad you mentioned it because it's, a, it's something that if you're exploring hormone uh, therapy or something like that, you don't just check testosterone. You don't just check hormones. You know, and that, that's one thing we always talk about with our patients is that it's important to make sure you're healthy. We know what the hormones do. We got to make sure you're healthy. We want to make sure they're not affecting other things because there is certain medications and certain supplements you can take that can adversely affect, for example, cholesterol uh, and some, some supplements you can take that help cholesterol, right? Okay. So we look at um, total cholesterol, triglycerides, your HDL, which is your healthy cholesterol, which you want to see increase with healthier fats. And there's some things that's just, you know, it, it also gives us a snapshot and say, hey, you need to turn up your omega-3s, uh, avocados, more salmon, you know, more fish. Um, like I use MCT oil in my protein shakes. I do two tablespoons twice a day. I'll do that. Um, I use it when I scramble eggs, right? Stuff like that. So we get to give so our, you use our that. I just want to check. So you use yeah. that in your shakes. Very cool. Do you use it in your coffee at all? Do you make bullet coffee? I used to, but I, I don't. So I, I don't use that in my, I only drink coffee in the morning. Now I used to, when I'd have my like afternoon coffee, mm -hmm. I would use it and do the bulletproof coffee, but I, I don't do it. I just do my two cups of coffee in the morning and I only do them black. Oh. I fast until noon i'm usually a, a, you know a, a, i do intermittent fasting so i don't have any calories before that 12 o'clock time um, i do the fasting too i shared this with you yesterday and mm -hmm. i i start to waver around i mean i'm hungry before even with the oil or the butter in me but yeah. what's your secret how do you get to, to noon yeah sometimes it's 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 sometimes it's tough uh, today I, I actually i had a podcast earlier i did and, and it was I could tell I was super hungry and I like was like ready for it. And we kept going. Like we, it was like, we were into some conversation. It went longer than it was planned. And, and like my noon was like, there goes, it's ticking away. <laughs> but the, um, I've been doing it for so long that it's like mind control. And sometimes, you know, I drink, um, I love the like uh, carbonated water. Like a, I see, LaCroix is not the brand I use. The brand I use is from Texas. It's awesome. It's like, organic or I don't know it's like super clean it's kind of expensive but it's very very good and that really helps take it away the hunger and sometimes I'll go to two three it depends if, if I'm busy and I'm cranking um, I, I don't eat like today I don't think I got a chance to eat until one like one o'clock just about and uh, just the way it worked from a schedule uh, but to, to that point though, is I do eat a higher cholesterol. I eat a lot of red meats. I eat a lot of healthy fats. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, there's, there's going to be a carryover of the LDL, which is, we didn't talk about yet, which is your unhealthy cholesterol. Right. And so you want to keep that typically at like under a hundred, um, and where your LDL, you want to keep that above, you know, 50, for example. And it, and it could be challenging it's easier for women usually for the HDL than men, but some men uh, we see have issues too with it and we have to address it because sometimes testosterone therapy can affect those levels in a more adverse way for men and women. And question. So when you say that, doesn't D if you're taking if one, like I am DHEA, I'm taking as well as testosterone and other things, but can't they work similarly on the other side to, to offset some of these things. So DHEA, can it turn into testosterone? It can help. So DHEA does it, its job, and I, I'll use, I love to use a lot of the, the kind of analogies and things like that. DHEA's job is more of being like a, a director of traffic. If you picture like that 
police officer in the four-way section, like telling people to come, stop. That's what DHEA does. And, and what it does is it helps, like, when you're stressed out and your cortisol floods in the traffic of cortisol, and it can say, stop, cortisol, testosterone, get over here. We got the cortisol coming, and uh, estrogen, come over here. And it, so it really does a good job at doing that, helping manage the hormone traffic, right? And if your DHEA is low and you're one of those, we call them like fight or flight 24 seven, everything's 911, it's emergency, mm. you know, super stressed out uh, individual, your adrenal glands are goofed up, your cortisol's goofed up, it, it just eats away your DHEA, it's like blowing the whistle and directing traffic and it, and it exhausts it. And, and then you aren't managing your internal stress, which carries out into your external stress while you feel so exhausted and beat down. But some people that handle their stress real well, DHEA or too much DHEA can kind of make them a little lackadaisical, kind of like, mm-hmm. what if? Yeah, we've seen, we've seen that with people too. And that's why sometimes it's good DHEA before bed, depending on how fast it metabolizes in your body or in the evening, because oh. it can help suppress cortisol levels. And when you go to sleep, you want cortisol down melatonin levels come up and then that what what you why you wake up in the morning is because your cortisol levels start to rise you're like got to get going right and if your cortisol's jacked up or you've conditioned yourself to like fly out of bed fly out of the house race to work like a crazy person deadline 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 run to lunch run back late got to do this got to pick the kids up and if that's your day you actually can become addicted to the release of cortisol and adrenaline it sounds crazy but it but it's, it's very true and then you, out of that is you almost want to be, you try to subconsciously create stress in your life to have, I know we're getting off, but it's just stuff that we see. And, and I, and I want to share that because, so for the listeners that this is all stuff that we know about, and we are thinking about this as when we talk about your life and your goals and what you're trying to do, why we're doing this hormone stuff so that it helps make sense in your blood work and it, then it helps us fix those things in your life a bit more. Right. I can't, I can tell you to do meditation and do, and, you know, a little, whatever in the morning, just take away stress or something like that. But not all things can be solved through hormones, but it's part of the picture. I think when people understand what their behavior does to their body, whether it's eating, mm. thinking, lack of exercise, doing exercise, sexual activity. I mean, Regular sexual activity is really, really healthy for you, especially as you get older. Like for men, prostate issues, things like that, like regular, uh, let's say, orgasm, like that is one of the healthiest things a, a man can do. To con- really? Oh, yeah. And it, would that even influence someone who might have prostate cancer if they're having regular sex? It, you know, I don't want to comment on cancer being good or would it do fix it or do anything, but it can, it sure can help put them in a better position to not get it by having regular, regular release is what the term we call. Um, and those kind of things are important. It's just, you know, those are the, that's the stuff. Our oldest client is 98. He'll be 99 this year. Wow. He was almost deathbed at 95. And now he's healthier. His physician, who's also a client, referred him in. And our docs were excited to work with him. And he's a super cool guy, uber successful guy. And uh, he's healthier now than he was at 90 for, for his doctors. You're like, man, he's, it's like he's going back the other way. He's not, we're not, you can't change the age. So I don't want people to, to hear me wrong. But that's how his docs is like, you know, he's been a doctor for him for like 20 years. And he's like, he's, he's back how he was when he was 90. We're 95. They were looking at, this might be towards the end. And that's when they kind of came around to work with us. Well, that's exciting. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. That's very promising. And just so we wrap this piece up, was there anything else you wanted to say about cholesterol? And I love the fact that you share, you know, for those of us who do tend towards ketogenic way of eating, that the cholesterol levels might be off because mm-hmm. of the fats, the good fats we're ingesting. Um, I claim that as well. But is there anything else around cholesterol you want to talk about that we should be aware of? Yeah, I think that, you know, one of the beliefs we have is there's increased cholesterol, like in your situation, we talked about it's a little bit high, but we talked about your diet, right? And we talked about your glucose levels are low, they're good, right? So if you have high cholesterol, 
you know, your high LDL, low HDL, and your sugar's high, and you don't exercise, and your blood pressure's high, maybe you smoke. Like those, once you start stacking up the things, then it's a problem, right? But if for us, like if if your LDL is on the high side, but based on the conversation we have, it fits like, oh, because you eat this, this, and this, great. But you exercise every day, your blood pressure is perfect, the rest of your blood works super clean. Keep eating. You're okay. You know, that's 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 our belief. Cholesterol, there's a cholesterol is not as bad as it was originally thought for, for many, many years. Sugar is much more of a focus. We like to see people with lower blood sugar. Mm. Uh, because sugar Huge. needs so many bad things. Yes. Like inflammation. And, I mean, it's we know that it feeds cancer and, and things like that. So Huge. sugar's a no-no. Good cholesterol. It's okay. And, and you guys you, have you know, a track you know, record. Your HDL, you guys- your healthy cholesterol was good, right? So mm-hmm. that's good. You know, but your 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 uh, your other your LDL was could use a little improvement, but based on your lifestyle, it makes sense and it's it's okay. No, we weren't concerned. I, I you know based on what I what I read. Good, that's huge. I'm glad to know that, and I love the glucose part. By the way, that's just so people know that it hasn't always been like that. When I was younger, <clears throat> I was diagnosed to be hypoglycemic. And I really was. I mean, I had all the symptoms. And I remember thinking, I'm not going to go down like this because that feeling of crashing all the time and the exhaustion and the not being able to think and the craving and all of it, it really ruled my life. So I just thought, you know, whatever it takes, I don't think I even ate sugar, honestly, for 17 years. I was so like, that's that's not going to happen in my world. Mm-hmm. So I'm very careful with that even today, and I've learned how to eat to keep the sh- the blood sugar at a really nice, healthy level. And it's beautiful. I love the feedback from you, and having seen for many years now the consistency of the health around the glucose, it's like yes. Took and a lot of intermittent fasting will mm-hmm. get your blood sugar levels lower unless while you fasting if you're eating if you're drinking like two liters of pop then it's not you know, if you're drinking a ton of sugar but if you if you're eating reasonable but you fast it gives your body that opportunity to actually burn through that sugar you might be storing that's great 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 stuff that you do the intermittent fasting and your blood work is a good reflection of it. and you guys do ways of healing cholesterol and getting it normalized without using medication. How do you yeah, do that? Certain, certain supplements are out there that can work really well. And we are, we have, as a, as a clinic, we have a less is more philosophy. Mm-hmm. Meaning we want to put you in the least amount of medications possible. And if it's a medication supplement mm-hmm. blend, and maybe it's a temporary supplement that helps get the correction. And then you stay there in that spot. Great. Right. And uh, that's, our, our, our approach is, uh, it's not totally, I, I, it's not holistic because we are looking at bioidentical hormone stuff, right? But it's as close as possible to, you know, if you're depressed or feel depressed, we may check hormones before we say, take this pill, right? And mm-hmm. just, and we don't, we don't work with folks in that, in that space. We're more hormone focused. And if something's wrong, you know, we can't clinically fix it that way, then we'll refer you to somebody and say, Hey, we tried this at least. Um, and, and so, yeah, it, it varies, but we try to supplements that help with blood pressure. We, we have supplements that we work with that help with cholesterol and uh, some other things too. Fantastic. So you do also glute glutathione yes. injections. Yeah. I am fascinated by that. What is it? What does it do in our bodies? And so glutathione is awesome. It's, it's a super powerful antioxidant. Uh, you can probably go to some of those like IV drip spas and get it done. We also prescribe it. But we have cl- folks that do it at home. They just do a little you know, shot in their shoulder. Um, they might do it a couple times a week or a week, depending on, you know, it can help with liver enzyme levels that are high. That's one of the first places that we. Oh, we wow. And it, and it helps just with, getting kind of detoxing your body. It's like, it's super healthy uh, for you to do under a controlled environment, right? Too much of anything's not good. 
And so that's, that's something that we do. We do things with, uh, you know, obviously B12 injections, uh, different amino acid stuff. We go all the way into peptides, which is a whole different conversation space. It's super awesome, super interesting, amazing stuff that's, that, that's, that's going on in that world. Um, and anything that's really going to help you from a health standpoint. And like I said, trying to be as holistic approach as possible with glutathione is something that can be natural occurring in the body to help flush out toxins, antioxidant. It's a powerful, powerful antioxidant. Um, so it, it works real well. <clears throat> okay. So glutathione helps repair damaged cells caused by stress, radiation, pollution, infection, and a host of other ailments. And you're talking about a, a little shot. Yes. Is, is it okay to take it through a pill or is the injection the best way? Yeah. So we, we don't, it's not that there isn't, there's some liposomal, uh, with liposomal is kind of a new, a new technology for oral stuff like vitamin C, glutathione to help break through the cell barrier, get the get ingredient where it needs to be. Uh, and it's done. I've personally never done glutathione, um, orally. Um, and I, we don't like prescribe it. I, I think that we would be open to it if we, uh, you know, if a pharmacy said, hey, we have this, we would try it on the docs or myself before we would take it out because we don't want it, something going out that doesn't maybe doesn't really work or the bioavailability is limited based on pe people. Not everybody deals with medication the same. Some people, mm -hmm. won't, you know, they'd be wasting their money where we know right. that, that small little shoulder injection um it could be the difference, the difference maker for sure. Because so I'm assuming that's you, like a subcutaneous shot. Uh, you can do it subcutaneous or small intramuscular. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm on board for anything sub Q, anything bigger. It's like, oh, I need well, a nurse. It's, size, it's usually the same size shot. It's just, you know, you're throwing it in your, and, you know, I come from a place where I've been like surrounded by it for so long. It's like simple to me. But yeah, it can be, well, we have a lot of clients that are like, man, no needles, but it's fine. We can do everything we do for the most part. We're, we're working on some stuff with, I have it sitting over here. I mean, gluteothion, topical, you know, transdermal gluteothion. There's, there's stuff out there, but, and we're looking into it. But until we, as a clinic, feel like thumbs up, this is working, right. we can go into it. All right. right. Wait there's a million the things we could do. But if we're not like really comfortable, we won't recommend it, even if it might be out there and maybe it works. Cool. When we come back, we're going to be speaking to Adam about his book. And I am going to delve a little bit into the peptide conversation. Cool. <laughs> You're listening to Dare to Dream podcast. This is Debbie Dashinger. I'm a media visibility strategist who helps you create a unique presence through coaching to write your book and make it into a page turner a guaranteed international bestseller done for you program, and also how to get scheduled on media interviews. Right now I'm opening up about to roll out next month, a new beta program, I'm super excited about people are signing up for, and it's called the Ultimate Visibility Formula, how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts in 60 days or less, even if you don't have a list of podcast shows or any publicity knowledge. And I make good on that. People are gonna get an amazing program so if you want to learn how you can attend the program yourself, go to debbyd.net slash visibility. And that's D-E-B-B-I D dot net slash visibility. And if you're tuning in after we have started, again, Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream, and I'm interviewing Adam Lamb. And the company that he founded is RenewLifeRx.com. So Adam, your book entitled Better Than the Binge, Overcoming the Social Obligation of Alcohol. Yes. Why? Why did you write the book? Big subject, big life change. Yeah. What happened? It's, it's, it, it's good. So, you know, drinking was always a part of my life, um, good or bad. And uh, even to the point as a child, my, my dad was an alcoholic which ultimately led to their divorce, which actually led to an early death for him and things like that. So alcohol had like this really a negative place. It, and I, I, you know, I started drinking probably junior in high school 
the social thing, partying, doing that stuff. I started working in nightclubs at 18. So I was just around it, you're hanging out, you're drinking, you're doing shots all the way till I was like 28 years old, 26, um, working in nightclubs, bartending, that kind of, so it was, it was the environment, right. That I was in, um, you think of, you know, the whole tailgate, uh, college sorority all this stuff right like we just glorify uh alcohol and and so that's why sometimes we don't realize that how bad it actually is because everyone else is doing it right it's like laying out in the sun tanning is not good for you but everyone else is doing it, it feels good and i look good you know so like there's some things we do that are healthy for us because it's just something we do and so you know i've been on this journey like self-improvement journey i'm like obsessed with it so I read so many books. I'm always looking into things and where I can better myself. And in doing this process, I kind of looked at alcohol and I was just 2016, September 5th, actually 2016. Wow. Prior to that, I was like August and I lived in Michigan at the time. We lived in a lake. So you're like out in the lake a lot, tying up, drinking, eating chips. Like just, it was like by the end of the summer, you're like, Ugh. you're like sick of yourself. <laughs> And we had, um, I think, was that Labor Day that's in September, I think? Yes. yes. Uh, so it was that weekend. We always, we always have like a party at our house, people over. And I was like, and I told my wife, I said, you know what? I, I'm going to take like 30 days off drinking. I'm like sick of it. it I didn't even want to like drink the weekend uh, that was there. And I'll be honest with you, you know, I think in hindsight, my mind was like, <clears throat> I'm going to quit drinking but I didn't like say I'm gonna quit drinking. So I went 30 days, that 30 days consisted of a trip to Vegas as a business trip. Wow. Didn't touch a drop of alcohol, which is crazy. I've been to Vegas and not seen daylight. Like right. literally that kind of like- <laughs> You really party. put yourself into some very testy situations. Yeah. And it, but, it, but it helped build my kind of confidence in the space of doing like, man, I just went to Vegas, cranking out meetings, doing a couple nightclub mixer type things, not drinking. I was like, well, it's pretty cool. I did a, we did a trip with the Detroit lions to Chicago, um, back home in Michigan. That's where I'm from. But a lot of just, you know, that that's kind of a lot of the network people get to hang out with. So I'm at these dinners with retired pro football player, everybody's ordering this great wine. And I'm like, diet Coke. And they're like, Whoa. you know, and, but I navigated through it. That's why I share some of those instances. And so I rolled into like 60 days. And the more I went, I was like more proud of myself. I kept overcoming these things. And, like I said, I spent a lot of time reading self-improvement and mindset stuff. And so like I'm able to execute those things, measure it. And I got to like 90 days and I was like, you know what? I'm never drinking again. I, I, I'm going to stop drinking. And my wife's like, you know, cool. I support you. And, and I was like, it's going to be tough. But I realized I was able to look back at my life the last 90 days and I just saw the world differently. Wow. I mean, I was, it was crazy. Okay. I mean, there's, the 30 days, like first of the year, or like giving up drinking for Lent doesn't do it like you need 90 days. And anyone that's gone through that will tell you you need 90 days because you have this like self-reflection of you, you're no longer who you were. Like alcohol, even after you say you don't, you know, well, I might drink on the weekends. It's, it's in you for a while and it affects your body, it affects your mind, your spirit. And, and so I removed it. I just saw everything, my confidence, who I was, I was like, man, I'm a, I'm a, a badass i'm like you just feel like this unstoppable person uh after you if something that you did daily you know prior to this i'd have a couple glasses of wine or a couple of vodkas every night and uh and when i think removing that it eliminated so much fog i had solutions faster and i was like i gotta tell the world about this and i didn't want to be the guy that's like hey bro how are you doing good hey you should drinking. hey Susie, how you doing yeah, still drinking? You should probably quit. You know, I didn't want to do that because that's not how you make friends. That's how you lose them. But so I, I was like, I want to write a book. And and I've always wanted to write a book. And I just, you know, this is my whole life. I've wanted to write a book. But 90 days of oh, stopping alcohol, I was like, I'm writing a book. Come hell or high water. And I actually reached out to a guy who's a friend of mine, Tucker Max. He wrote a book. I hope they serve beer in hell. He also has... Uh, a publishing company that he, he works with. And I told him my story. He's like, dude, that's awesome. You know, I already had like the stuff, all my notes. Cause what I did through that process is I journaled everything. Right. And I journaled the emotional stuff I went through, the reflection stuff I went through, the situations that how I felt the nights I went out and didn't drink and came home. And I was like, 
awesome, right? Like it makes you feel good when you stick to your commitment, right? And, and so we, he helped me write this book, took us about nine months to do and then launched it. And I mean, I've just, since that's happened, I've been able to help hundreds of people quit drinking alcohol, change their lives, save their lives, save their marriages, save their careers. And it's awesome. So I do a coaching kind of thing in that space, like kind of some one-on-one. -on -one. Like I said, I've been, I've had blessed with the opportunity to work with a lot of pretty influential high profile individuals and through that, whether it's, you know, the hormone path or the alcohol path and some of that stuff, I'm able to. But there's a connection there, isn't there? That <clears throat> our hormones are connected to increased alcohol consumption. Yeah, absolutely. So it, I have a doc friend of mine who's uh, done a ton of studies in the addiction space and him and I will just, you know, we like to just have these kind of deep conversations on research and stuff like that. And some things that he's seen is that a lot of times men who over 38 that are likely to have kind of addiction issues. And remember addiction to alcohol isn't blackout drunk, abusing your wife. It's consistent drinking, daily drinking, the occasional intoxication, uh, that kind of stuff, especially if it's on the backside of high stress. Mm. And so what happens is as our testosterone can decrease, as men, we don't manage, and women, to, to, we don't manage stress as well. So the alcohol or substance helps to do that. We're more likely to become addicted to substance due to lower hormones amazing well first of all congratulations that's almost three years ago yeah and that's enormous to have that kind of commitment to yourself and your passion i mm -hmm. love the idea that you are a voracious reader and you're so invested in this world of bettering yourself inside mm -hmm. and outside and you also do it right? You don't just immerse yourself in the world. It's what you do for a living. It's what you do with your own body and mind and spirit. And that's a big commitment. So yeah. that to you. You. I just you know I'm a big believer that you have to lead by example. And, you know, I also, I was just telling you uh, before we started, you know, last night I, I work with our youth group at church too. And I, I have the opportunity, I'm so blessed there to speak into their lives, right? And share the stuff of, my past to be the person in their life, an influential person to help guide them down a good path. Cause I, I was a mess when I was young, right? Like my high school, junior high, year, Oh, geez. But it had, I had somebody that knew what I know today invested in me then cause I didn't, things could have been better. Happy how things turned out now, but it could have been easier for me to have somebody in my life. So I do that too. But in all those things, you know, the way I live my life every single day is I, is, People are watching, right? And I need to lead by example. And when you lead by example, it's a more proud life. You feel better about what you do. You know, if I'm telling you, Debbie, you should eat this, do this, exercise this way, these kind of things. It, if I actually do that stuff, <laughs> there's, there's there's more validity in it than you know. I need people to see that you know that who I am is, or who I talk about, or who I portray is really who I am every day. Unless. Beautiful, really. We could do a whole show just on that. There's so much to say about the body and alcohol and uh, and more. So <laughs> maybe that'll happen at another time. Yeah. That's very appealing. Um, so for people out there who really want to optimize their health, you mentioned peptides, which I yeah. find interesting. Peptides. I do understand that it can provide significant anti-aging benefits. And I also understand there's different kinds of peptides that do yeah. different things. So let, let me just start with this. I'll direct this a little bit so we get yeah. there. The peptides that are designed to heal tendons and ligaments. Yeah. BPC-157. What Look a cool you, name. Girl, you know what you're talking about. Not a lot of people, yeah, that's good. I'm impressed. I love it. This is called researching Adam Lamb and Renew Life RX.com. <laughs> so you did your homework. That's good. It's effort. Due diligence. So yeah, talk to me about that. How yeah, so does a powerful peptide heal like that? Yeah, so I'll tell you specifically. So 
a quick overview, a lot of peptides or when they originally kind of hit the, the buzz, like you talked that you first mentioned with the anti-aging type stuff is they're they're created is like growth hormone releasing peptides. Basically you're taking something that stimulates your body to naturally release more growth hormone, which helps, you know, the body recover and repair to cellular level. And, and it, it, it's good stuff. But what you mentioned, for example, another phase that's in the peptide space is regeneration, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the part that we really like is, and we'll talk a little bit where I'm going with regenerative medicine is from a clinic standpoint here very, very soon. But things like the BPC-157, it's a peptide that helps with healing. There's also um, another one called thymazine beta-4, uh, the, the kind of... Uh, other name for it's called TB500, which people might be more familiar, something you could Google more than you would thymosine beta-4. And that's a, like a tissue repair, right? Wow. Well, I recently, I had an acute Achilles tendon tear back in July. And for like six, seven, eight months, not, like it just doesn't get better. Yeah. And uh, I went, uh, our doc put me on a BPC-157 within a week I could get back on the treadmill and do like 30 minutes of cardio, not jogging, but like back. I couldn't even, I mean, I couldn't literally couldn't take a walk with my dog around the block. That's I would have amazing. Been, I would so much pain. And within a week of being on it, my, my Achilles tendon just was getting better, better. Now it's been um, four weeks. So I did my first kind of round of it and I'm back on a treadmill. Like I can, I can get going. I could move around. I can hop around. I could do some stuff, which I haven't been able to do in a long time. And people don't, you know, it's one of those things that, that God brought me through it because I've always been in pretty good health from a physical standpoint. And I needed to understand it sucks sometimes just to walk, right? Mm -hmm. Like make me so much, so grateful. Yeah. And the, uh, so it worked phenomenally to, from a, to help prepare it. So we have a lot of uh, clients that do that stuff post-surgery, uh, maybe to avoid surgery, they're, they're going to give, you know, six months of that or three months to, to see how that goes. I'm actually going to do stem cells here in the next week or so. Uh, with we're, we're opening a stem cell clinic here locally in Texas. And so that's super exciting. And that's a whole next level of re regenerative medicine. But, wow. you know, when you combine the, the stem cells, the hormone, the peptides, and, you know, having knowledge of healthy living, uh, you can really, really help people, right? Especially if they're dedicated to follow that path. Yeah. Well, you know, I I shared with you the first time we talked, like if human growth hormone was affordable, I'd be living on it. I'm yeah. just saying. Everybody I tried it once and many years ago, it was crazy ridiculous, the change. Never anticipated that, but without a doubt, my whole body changed. L literally the shape yeah. of my body and and my energy level and how I functioned, it was spectacular. But a month, you know, sub Q injections were over and that was that. So you also work with something IGF, which is insulin growth factor. Insulin like or, growth factor, IGF-1, LR3, or, and that's considered a peptide uh, in that it's in that same space. And, and that's the thing is that, you know, the, the growth hormone, like human growth hormone, you're, you're taking a product that puts more growth hormone in your body and some of the peptides that fall under that, like growth hormone uh, increasing peptides, right? Those actually get your body to increase your IGF-1 levels naturally, right? Or, or it, on their own as opposed to dumping it all in, right? And so it can, it, there's more, of, you know, from the studies, there's more of a longevity of use because we've seen folks that have done growth hormone pretty consistently for like five years and it doesn't work as well. You can also get insulin sensitivity with growth hormone pretty bad, especially at higher doses. So there's, there's, you know, there's, there isn't a hundred percent on whether growth hormone can speed up tumor growth or increase the risk of, if you have an underlying issue of cancer, mm. um, but there, there isn't really anything saying that's for sure. And there's nothing that says it's not, Okay. You know, the, the peptides are also way more affordable. Growth hormone is crazy expensive uh, and it's highly regulated too, where the peptides are not as regulated. You always want to make sure you, you know, we work with legitimate pharmacies that make it, you know, actually the best pharmacy in the country that makes it who we work with. Um, and it gets the results. You know, we, we rolled out peptides 
for a year with kind of inner circle folks, our docs, you know, myself, other people that to measure it, see how it works, see how we did all that stuff before we offer. Same, you know, like I said earlier, with some of these other things, we always check it first before we roll it out. And just the, it's been incredible from a health standpoint, especially the regenerative ones like the TB, the BPC-157 and the thymazine beta-4 are just phenomenal. But there's also there's fat loss stuff I'm going to do here soon. It's a, a topical fat loss that just it, it gets rid of the fat right below the skin. Who doesn't want that? Well, topical. So cool, because that was going to be one of my questions. Is all of this based on injections or are there yeah. different forms that you can ingest a peptide? There's, so there's peptides now that, and I haven't tried all this stuff. There's, it's so vast that, that, that it's hard to like be, we know we're, for, we're, we're with the experts that know it real well. We're not with all of it. So there's so many of it, but the pharmacy that makes all this stuff, these are the guys, they got the nerd docs that have done all the research the trials, all this stuff to understand it. But there's peptides for men with hair loss that it's, it's a topical thing, it's a peptide that goes in your hair that's crazy making hair grow back, they're awesome. There's a lot of, there's oral, you can take BPC-157 orally and it can help with leaky gut, it can help with Crohn's disease, it can help with, it can go through and help with that interior you know, intestinal lining and all kinds of stuff. Oh my God, I want a peptide drip right now. Yeah. <laughs> Get out the IV. Right. Oh, that's it's, amazing. It's, uh, and so there's, there's Topical, there's topical stuff. There's a, a one that helps with tissue repair too. It's like AOD. I got actually I have something sitting here. It's AOD 9604, and that's a cream that you can you put. Uh, it, 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 let's see, application rub in between forearms. That's it. it huh. might, and what it does is it helps um, with repairing uh, cartilage throughout the body, right? And there's there's another one that that's that's popular, especially with some women. It's um, it's called GHKCU, and there's a there's a that's well that's the scalp one, so it's like a scalp foam that helps with hair loss, but it also helps the subcutaneous injection helps with skin elasticity um, significantly, and it can help with that is it like just underneath the dermal uh, area tightening too, so it can help help when you so if you have an injury and that the injury is starting to heal and this area is still kind of weak from maybe an impact of injury that can also help this area out. So it's kind of helping from the inside out. It's awesome. Amazing. Amazing. Wow. Love hearing this. Love being alive during this and all the yes. options. This is spectacular. Yes. Uh, so folks, you're listening to Dare to Dream podcast. Subscribe so this comes right into your box, whether you're in YouTube or Spreaker or Stitcher, iTunes, you can subscribe. Easy peasy. Leave us a five-star review so other people who enjoy this kind of conversation can find the show. And again, the show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and accessconsciousness.com. And <clears throat> we're coming to the end, but I want to try to get in a couple quick, quick questions here. The one more peptide that I know you guys work with, which is chemically synthesized and similar to growth hormone releasing hormone, which is called Tessa Morlin. Say yeah. what it is? Tezamorelin. Tezamorelin, even yeah. prettier. Okay. And, and so that's it's a great one you brought up. I personally haven't tried it. We've had some kind of folks on the team that have tried it. We've had some folks that have tried it that were doing growth hormone prior and then tried this to kind of compare, contrast. And the tezamorelin, as far as like overall fat loss, recovery w w was better. I mean, the, you know, these are, we just, Hey, what do you think? What do you like better? And that, and the, the folks are saying that they like that more than growth hormone. Um, and it's, it is, you know, it's, it's probably the more expensive peptide, but it, I haven't used it. Like I said, but the folks that we've had using it, that we've been monitoring and checking their blood work and stuff have, have had nothing but rave reviews about it. And their blood work is showing good stuff. And, um, that 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 product's really incredible. I think that that this year is going to be something we're going to do pretty big with that product because it it has been so beneficial clinically, and mm. uh, we want to see where it can go for main, more mainstream. It's awesome though. Yeah, this is exciting stuff. And again, folks, this is Adam Lamb. If you would like to go to the website, it's renewlife.rx.com. 
Adam, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Yeah, you know, right now what I'm laser focused on is we're launching a stem cell clinic. If you can see that here, it's called Renew Life Rejuvenation. Reset, Renew, Regenerate. Uh, we're launching the first one here in Texas. And then we're going to be kind of licensing our process throughout the country. Uh, that's, that's the goal. That's the dream, right, that we want to do to where we can bring what we do in regenerative medicine to major cities throughout the country uh, so that we can, you know, essentially help more people. That's a very exciting stuff. Thank you. And what, is there anything here at the end you'd like to tell the listeners or viewers that we haven't yet addressed? No, I think that if they, if they have any questions on finding out information uh, to go to renewliferx.com and, and fill out just a contact form, we'll get in touch with them within 24 hours at the latest. Um, if there's anyone, you know, one wants to reach out personally that maybe they're struggling with something in their life, whether it's, you know, alcohol, hormones, something like that, you know, that they can feel free to um, email me. The book email is adam at better than the binge.com. Okay. And if they want to follow me on Instagram and see what I'm doing in my life, it's Adam Lamb 33 and uh, they can see what's what's happening. Awesome. So just folks, I want you to see real quick <clears throat> from the blood tests, blood tests that I did through Adam and his company. You know, you could see this is pretty detailed information. I was happy <laughs> that I had a great blood test and there were pieces for me to look at and pieces that we're gonna do some work on that are important. A couple of hormones that I have that actually register too high, which is very interesting and very important, but it's a ton of information and it's a really good blueprint. You know, it's a good reference point to start from to see where whatever changes and tweaks I make and how this might show up in three more months after those changes and tweaks. But I'm also super dedicated to longevity and yeah. to being healthy. So this is so important. And I can testify as somebody who <clears throat> suddenly went into a spell of like, I've always been full of energy and life and, and social. And I had a day I woke up and total despair, exhausted, uninterested in anything in life, definitely zero, <laughs> negative libido and more. And most important I think is I didn't feel like me. I felt so completely outside of myself. I couldn't even recognize me. Mm -hmm. Thank God for hormones. Thank God yeah. that somebody recognized and put me you know, on the you, You're talking about your blood work and the, how thorough we were and the process we did. You know, one thing that our motto we have that we say that's kind of catchy is if you're not testing, you're guessing, right? And, and we say that because it's kind of silly and catchy, but that's the reality is too often we talk to folks and they're like, well, I think it's this or I think I have this. Maybe I have a thyroid issue, or maybe I have a testosterone. I think I have this, and I'm like, "How do you, did you check? Did you have blood? Oh, no, I didn't get my blood work done." But because they like WebMD'd it or started getting on Google, don't get on Google. Reach out to us. We'll look. We take the guesswork out of it. Um, we figure it out, and this is what we look at. We've worked with thousands of people for the course of time. We work with some major celebs. We work with major high-profile business folks. We work with, like I said, my neighbor down the street who's just trying to get it back after. Had popping out some kids, you know, like whatever the, whatever the goal is, we can help with that. Um, unless you're trying to be a bodybuilder, we cannot help you with that. We don't work with those <laughs> folks. We help, we're into lifestyle optimization, not performance enhancing. Uh, so that we'd love to help out anyone, any one of your listeners that want to come over. And um, if they also, if they mention they came from your show, we will offer a, uh, I think we do a 20% discount on their initial consultation and in blood work. That's a awesome. great thing I just remembered, yeah. And I can testify that Adam does get back to you really quickly. So, you know, you won't be out there like me calling the doctor that I did in literally crazy email and a phone call, nothing. They, I don't even understand that, but he gets back to you right away. So it is a whole different energy methodology and way of doing business and creating great health for yourself. But definitely don't guess, test. Adam, thank you so much for your brilliance today. On thank Dear you. Oh, you're, you're too kind. Thank you for having me. 
It's awesome. It's been great. And I end today's show with this quote from Marilyn Ferguson. Of all the self-fulfilling prophecies in our culture, the assumption that aging means decline and poor health is probably the deadliest. Next Good. week on Dare to Dream, I'm featuring and bringing back Julie Lowenstein. She's a psychic, a medium, a channel. She's amazing. And she does live readings for the Dare to Dream audience. Last time she read people on the show and they were blown away by her accuracy. So we're bringing her back for big transformation conversations. Subscribe to these YouTube videos, youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. So you can see all these beautiful people, including Adam, what he looks like and feel the animation and the passion. And feel free to join the class if you're ready for the ultimate visibility formula, debbyd.net slash visibility. And remember, the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. Yes. Yeah.